Welcome to Nature All Around Us. The Natural History Museum of Utah built this exhibit in celebration of our 50th anniversary. It's all about the nature that thrives in cities and towns across Utah. Have you ever thought about all the places you can find nature? Sometimes when people talk about nature, they only think of far away places like mountaintops or rugged desert canyons. But you don't have to leave home to find nature. Wild plants and animals live in backyards, planter boxes, and parking strips in your neighborhood. If you know how to look, you can find an astonishing number of wild plants and animals living near you. Try getting to know a few of your wild neighbors. To find the hidden worlds just outside your front door, practice the skills of a naturalist. Be curious, look closely, and watch patiently. That's what Rebecca Ray does when she explores her small backyard in Salt Lake City. She's found over 200 different species of plants and animals there and is still counting. She discovers creatures in many tiny habitats, between an old board and the fence, under rocks, in the old stump, and she doesn't check just once. Looking back at different times of day and different times of year, she makes new discoveries. Most of the wild animals in Rebecca Ray's yard are invertebrates, insects, spiders, worms, and other creatures without backbones. These tiny neighbors are worth getting to know. They play important roles as pollinators, decomposers, predators, and prey in ecosystems all over the world. They are also easy to find and catch. Here are a few bugs you can look for. Ladybugs are fierce hunters that eat aphids that suck the sap out of plants. When you meet a ladybug, be sure to count her spots. These spots and the colors on her shell are clues to her identity. There may be up to 80 different ladybugs in Utah, but there are four really common ones, including the seven-spotted ladybug. European earwigs like to hang out where it's dark and moist. Carefully turning over rocks and looking under leaves on the ground is a great way to find them. You'll probably see potato bugs and worms too. My favorite thing about earwigs is that the females are great moms. They sit with their eggs and protect their young when they hatch. Lace wings are dainty green insects with transparent wings and thin mint green veins. Like many insects, they are nocturnal or active at night and attractive to light. So on a warm summer evening, go outside and check out who's buzzing around a light. When you go searching for bugs, bring something that you can keep them in for a little while to get a better look at them. Try taking a photo or drawing a picture of what you see up close. Be sure to put the bugs back where you found them. And if you turn over rocks or logs, put those back too. They're somebody's house. Birds are another kind of wild animal that are easy to spot in neighborhoods. Many birds have adapted to living closely with people. We plant many different kinds of trees, bushes, and flowers in our backyards that provide food and shelter for many different kinds of birds in our neighborhoods. Plus, there's all that bird seed we put out in bird feeders. About 90 different species of birds regularly visit backyards in Utah. One dedicated Utah birder has seen 156 different species of birds in his backyard. One way to get to know your feathered neighbors is to learn to recognize their songs. Here are three to help you get started. Black-capped chickadees are active and acrobatic. They can even perch upside down. Listen for their call that sounds like their name. Chickadee dee dee. House sparrows are chubby little birds that feed in crowded flocks and enjoy a good dust bath or a dip in a puddle. Listen for their simple cheep or cheer up song in almost any neighborhood. American goldfinches are bright yellow birds that enjoy snacking on sunflower seeds and thistle heads. But their flight call sounds like they want a different kind of snack. Potato chip! Your yard, balcony garden, or even a parking strip can all be wildlife habitat. Welcome birds, pollinators, and other creatures to your habitat by providing the four resources all animals need water, food, cover, and places to raise young. All wildlife needs clean drinking water to survive. Birds bathe in water to keep their feathers in good working order. 
You can provide water for wildlife in many different ways, from a shallow dish with water in it to a bird bath or a pond. If you include a variety of plants in your yard, you can provide food for wildlife all year. Flowers for pollen and nectar, leafy plants to host insects, and shrubs and trees that provide berries and seeds. Bird feeders can be a good way to add to birds' natural diets. Wildlife needs places to hide to feel safe from people, predators, and bad weather. You can help them by not being too tidy. Shrubs, thickets, brush piles, and rocks are great hiding places. Tiny creatures can even find cover in a layer of leaves on the ground. The long-term survival of wildlife in our neighborhoods depends on their ability to reproduce and successfully raise their young. Many places that offer cover can double as shelters for young. Try adding a bee house or a bird house to enrich your habitat. Now you're ready to get outside and explore the hidden worlds in your neighborhood. Catch some bugs, listen to birds, draw, take photos, or write notes to help you remember what you saw. Teach the adults at your house about wildlife-friendly gardens and help them do one thing to make habitat for wild plants and animals in your yard, planter boxes, or parking strip. You can help them to see the nature all around us.